The following is a GAWP interview conducted at the Queensboro Elks Lodge at House of Glory's Never Trust a Snake on July 1st. I hope you guys enjoy listening to it as much as we did conducting it. Enjoy! Hey guys, it's Avenging Ben coming to you from the Queensboro Elks Lodge. As you can tell, my voice sounds like a horse kicking me in the throat. That's because we just wrapped up here at HOG Never Trust a Snake. I am here with Matt the Daddy Koffler. What's up? And we are all, and we are about to interview quite possibly one of the hottest indie acts right now. He's the man who took CZW by storm, and the rest of the indie world is his oyster right now. He is a former CZW World Heavyweight Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, I am here with Chainsaw Joe Gacy. What's going on? So, sir, thank you so much for agreeing to this interview. How are you doing tonight? Doing good. I'm a little sweaty. It's hot in here. Uh, a little, a little tired, but feeling good. Feeling real good about tonight. So let's start it off with the most relevant question. You took on. You came up just a little bit short tonight against Cashflow Ken Broadway. What was it like being in the ring with Ken, and where does he rank right now among your current opponents? Uh, as far as ranking upon my current opponents, I'll put him up there. Uh, definitely a good talent. Um, <laughs> A good breed. Uh, I wouldn't, my, again, first time me and him getting in the ring together, so I didn't really know what to expect, but um, I'd rank him up there, uh, you know, I'd definitely say top 10. Fantastic. Okay. Top, top 10, yeah. Putting over, putting over Mr. Broadway. Go, very Mr. good. Mr. Broadway, good talent. All right, so my first question, obviously, is like, this is obviously a very long story, but I asked this to a lot of people, and I want to hear your take on it. Okay. Like, when you got into wrestling, was it something you fell into out of necessity or by accident, or was it something that from day one you always wanted to do? Uh, I would say from day one, it's definitely something I always wanted to do. As far as actually training and becoming an actual professional wrestler, I did kind of fall into that. Because, quick story in a nutshell, um, out of high school, it was going to be one of two things. I loved pro wrestling, so I was either going to be a pro wrestler, or I loved filmmaking, so I was going to go to film school. Uh, one or the other, uh, I used to do the whole backyard thing back in the day. Like you do. Like you do, yeah, like you do. Um, and uh, kind of, quick, long story short, we kind of met a, uh, a professional wrestler by the name of Lobo, one of the old legend guys at Combat Zone Wrestling. Uh, he introduced us to, like, CZW. Well, I mean, we knew CZW, but he introduced us to the owner of CZW at the time, John Zandig. And we kind of fell into training with Combat Zone Wrestling. And, uh, I mean, that's kind of where it took off. What's CZW like as a working environment? Is it a good place to work? Is it? How would you say is it different from other promotions? Uh, I would say the difference with, from other promotions would be... I mean, it's different from other promotions. I would say the thing with CZW is it has a little bit of everything as far as... Like, you go to one promotion, they have this. You go to this promotion, they have this. If you go to CZW, you're going to have a little bit of everything. You're going to get some awesome... Uh, High flying stuff, you're gonna get some hardcore wrestling, you're gonna get some good heavyweight wrestling, and you're gonna get some probably funny comedy wrestling. Like, you're gonna get a little bit of everything at CZW, um, so usually nobody goes home unhappy. Good to know, I'll have to come down there myself sometime. Definitely. All right, I'm going to go with a little bit of a fan question here. Okay, this comes. This one comes from Jason Ducey on Twitter. How did the Switchblade conspiracy come about, and can you, recon- can you recommend some matches during your time together? Uh, well, first off, as far as matches, um, I've only done one match as far as all three of us wrestling on a team, which was a charity show under CZW, so it wasn't like a full CZW show. So I don't think you're going to be able to find that, to be completely honest. Um, But other matches, I mean, me and Sammy tug a lot in the Switchblade Conspiracy. Um, I mean, obviously you could always go with Tangle Web 3. Me and Sammy wrestling DJ Hyde and Greg Excellent. Um, That was up there. Um, Or you could do me and Sammy versus DJ Hyde and Greg Excellent and the fans bring the weapons match from Tournament of Death. Um, A lot of those uh, Switchblade Conspiracy matches kind of happen with that type of stuff. It was either me and Sammy tagging or John Moxley or Dean Ambrose and him tagging. Uh, only one time we did a six-man tag. But honestly, the idea came about, honestly, all Sammy Callahan's idea. Um, he wanted to start a group at CZW. Him and John Moxley at the time were really good friends. He wanted to get John Moxley in CZW, and he wanted another guy. And me and Sammy kind of bonded through training, and uh, he decided I was the guy he wanted. So it kind of just took off from there. Very good. You just mentioned Tournament of Death. Yes. How many have you competed in? Uh, well, I was in one tournament, but as far as 
competed at Tournament of Death. Uh, I think maybe five of them. I'm I talking about the tournament itself. Okay, I was in the tournament one time. Uh, I did. I went out first round against. It was supposed to originally be me versus Matt Tremont. Uh, unfortunately, he wasn't able to compete that day, so I ended up wrestling a guy named Ron Mathis, who beat me in the first round, and he went on to lose in the second round. But it's all good. As you, what would you say? So you work in CZW without bearing the lead. Here is quite possibly one of the most hardcore uh, deathmatch wrestling promotions around today. Mm-hmm. You're keeping the spirit of ECW alive in spades. Okay. What would you say is the most painful thing that's happened to you while working with CZW? Uh, see, as far as painful, it's hard to say. Um, I, 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 left, I left deathmatch wrestling kind of behind. I don't really do it too much anymore. Um, See, I don't know, like, I've had some things happen, but I don't know if I can call them painful. I've had some things where it was like, I've bled from, like, some things that have happened. But they, like, I was more freaking out at the fact that there was so much blood rather than, like, ow, this hurts. So, like, I don't know if I can really say anything. Like, I'll I'll give you two answers. Uh, First answer would be actual most painful thing I experienced was a match I mentioned earlier, Tangle Web 3. Me and Greg Excellent went off the top of top rope onto a fence of barbed wire. That was the most painful thing I've probably ever experienced in wrestling, just landing on barbed wire and having to get up from the barbed wire and pull myself out of it. Um, I felt even worse for Greg because he got stuck farther and his hair got tangled in it. So that was like a mess. Um, Jesus. As far as worst thing that ever happened, probably I got hit with a Christmas ball in the face. Oh, fuck. Uh, it cut me. Cut me right in the perfect spot, and I bled all over. It didn't so much hurt as much as I freaked out because I bled buckets. It was probably the most terrifying moment of my life in wrestling. Um, but, I mean, it happened, and I'm still standing here, so. Still standing here, still man. Still standing here. Still standing. All right, here's a, here's a, much, here's a fun, more enjoyable, funnier question. Right. This one comes from the Boulevard Bullies, of oh, course. Oh, my, my dudes. Uh, everyone's dudes. We love them here, <laughs> don't we? We don't. <laughs> Just kidding. But he, uh, they ask, how much do you love Angry Orchard? <laughs> Considering I may have had some tonight, I love it a lot. Uh, but I got to say, I think my choice now is with Strongbow over Angry Orchard. Joe Gacy is brought to you by Strongbow Hard Cider. There you go. Patrick Stewart's in the commercials. I love those. <laughs> All right. Now, oh, here's, here's a good one. All right. This one comes once again from Jason Ducey, and he asks, As someone who was there live at Combat Zone Wrestling Sacrifice, I'm curious to know what ideas went into the match with Leo Rush, and do you feel it topped the previous match? Um, it depends how you look at it. Uh, we did a hardcore match, and the match before that was a wrestling match. So... As far as the match itself, psychology, yeah, I would say it topped the first match, but if you're like a wrestling fan, it's hard to say. Um, As far as ideas, uh, me and Leo Rush actually kind of went shopping together to form ideas for that match. Really? So that weird thing I pulled out from under the ring, I bought at uh, Home Depot, so... Like most good hardcore weaponry comes from. Absolutely, you know, we, uh, we went to Home Depot and bought some things and hit each other with them, so... And you've been best friends ever since. I, I wouldn't say that. No, I'm kidding. Uh, you know, what's it like working with Leo? Is he good to collaborate with? Uh, Leo's an awesome dude. I like, great talent. Uh, definitely going to go far. Uh, quick learner, obviously. He's been around for, what, like three years now? And he's excelling the pace he is. Um, I mean, he's definitely going to be somebody. Not saying he's not now, but he's definitely going to be somebody one day. Fantastic. This is one more silly question. This comes from frequent contributor to the show, Nova, and she asks, which do you prefer, pancakes or waffles? I'm going to quick answer pancakes, but I do sometimes get into a hankering mood for waffles. I love Waffle House. You, Mike Verna, Nikki Adams, everybody on this freaking show loves Waffle House. Fuck it, Matt. We're going on a road trip to Waffle House. All right. You should. Waffle House is worth it. It's delicious. It's the one takeaway that is from all of this. Waffle House is There's perfect. none around here, and it's very upsetting. Very. All right, and my final question to you, sir. Like, if you, the Joe Gacy of 2017, could uh-huh. go back to the Joe Gacy of 2007 and give him one piece of advice, what would it be? Um, don't listen to everybody. Uh, take everything you hear with a grain of salt. 
and make yourself a star now. Don't wait. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Juba. Is that all of it? I think so. If, you, if I could go back further, I'd tell myself not to wrestle untrained. All right, that's actually good advice. <laughs> all right, sir. Now, as we're wrapping this up, is there what, where will you be appearing next, and where can they find you on social media? Uh, social media is very easy. So I'm just at Joe Gacy on Twitter. Very easy. Instagram is Joe underscore Gacy, at Joe underscore Gacy. Uh, it's hard to give you a Facebook link. I'm on Facebook. Just go to the search bar, type in Joe Gacy. You'll find me.